It is therefore now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you and uh, good morning, Speaker. My question is for the Acting Premier. One problem with the Liberal government is that they will say anything and promise anything to stay in power. Sure will. We saw it yesterday with the throne speech. The Liberals talked a lot about care, but for 15 years they ignored health care. They ignored mental health care. They ignored right. dental care. Right. They ignored long-term care. Yep. Speaker, in fact, the only thing they actually cared about is clinging to power. Mr. Speaker, why do the Liberals pretend to care about families 79 days before the next election? Oh. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, let's, let's be clear. Ontarians do not want to go back. They do not want to go back to the kind of cuts to public services that were made by Mike Harris. Speaker, they do not want to go back the kind of meanness towards people that was exhibited by Stephen Harper. What people, Speaker, really want is they want a caring and a fair society that allows them the opportunity to grow a speaker. What they want is a premier and this government to help them build Ontario by investing in them, Speaker, by investing in their care, by making sure, Speaker, that the kind of pressures the families are facing today, that government is giving them, providing them relief. It's about pressure families are feeling about finding good childcare for little ones, saving up tuition for the teens heading to university, or how to deal with an aging Answer. parent by finding proper home to care. That's what Ontarians want, and Speaker, that's Thank the you. kind of care we're investing in. That's right. Stop, stop. <clears throat> okay. I've heard from both sides. Your indicators are that you've forgotten what I've started before the break, and we're going to ramp it up. And I'll make an another observation. While the question was being put, members from the same side were making comments, and when the answer was being put, members from the same side were making comments. You're not helping each other. I'll help you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Back to the Acting Premier. The Premier has made commitments of billions of dollars in new spending for expensive re-election ploys. This is a desperate attempt to spend their way to votes instead of trying to fix the problems that they actually created. In fact, Speaker, one media headline said it all, quote, Premier's throne speech is liberal snake oil. Quote, it's the oldest snake oil in the Liberals' bag of tricks, and if it was true, Ontario's streets would already be paved with gold. Well, Speaker, certainly our streets aren't paved with gold, and in the case of the Ring of Fire, which was not mentioned in the throne speech, the roads are not even existing at all. Mr. Speaker, is this not a desperate attempt to win votes with the taxpayers' own Question. money? Thank you. Well, Speaker, while Doug Ford and the Ontario Conservatives may be focused on cutting vital public services that people of Ontario need and deserve, our government will remain focused on building its care agenda. Our government, Speaker, will remain focused on focusing on home care and elder care, on investing in our mental health care system, and expanding child care and eliminating the price of tuition. Speaker, these are the pressures that the families are facing. These are the kind of investments that they want in their go government, from their government, Speaker. Building on our historic investment in building our health care system and our education system, we need to, Speaker, take the next step in building their care agenda. So while Doug Ford and the Ontario Cons Conservatives are focused on cutting public services, we're going to build a caring and fair society for people of Ontario. Thank you. Minister of Children and Youth Services, come to order. Final supplementary. Back to the Acting Premier. Over the last 15 years, the Liberals have doubled government spending. They've more than doubled the provincial debt. Ontario is the world's most indebted province or state uh, anywhere. So what do the Liberals decide to do? They attempt to cling to power by trying to fool the people of Ontario right before an election, but they aren't fooling anyone. If the Liberals get re-elected, it will be just more of the same. So, Mr. Speaker, do the Liberals think they can win votes by spending more taxpayers' money, and who do they think they're fooling? 
Well, the speaker, uh, the member opposite claims to be a numbers guy, so maybe he can help me with this. You know, what we want to know, Speaker, what Ontarians want to know is how many jobs are going to be cut under a Conservative government. According to one independent economist, it could be 40,000 jobs. Another says there's going to be 75,000 jobs, Speaker. During the last election, we know the same party, these same members, ran on. Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, come to order. And the member from Prince Edward Hastings, come to order. Finish, please. Speaker, during the last election, we know that the, uh, the Conservative uh, members, all the members elected in the House, ran on cutting 100,000 public sector jobs. Teachers, nurses, personal support workers, childcare workers, people who make our communities and our, our economy uh, take speaker people who provide essential services to our families and to Ontarians across the province. Clearly, they're and still sir? clinging on to the same agenda of, of cuts. That is not acceptable to Ontarians. That is not Thank acceptable you. to our premier and this government. New question, leader of the opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the acting premier. Quote: For many of our friends and neighbours, life is getting harder. The cost of living is rising, and at the same time, stable, long-term jobs, jobs that pay a decent wage, are proving harder to find. And as these pressures mount, they bear down on families where it matters most. People are struggling to take care of themselves and their loved ones. Quote, this is not from the Liberal or this is not from the opposition. This is straight out of yesterday's throne speech. This is the Ontario the Liberals have created. Mr. Speaker, how can they prou be proud of the fact that, quote, people are struggling to take care of themselves and their loved ones? Quote. Thank you. Continue. Speaker, we, we do live in an unprecedented, unprecedented time. Our economy in this province is growing. It's one of the fastest growing economy in yeah. Canada, in fact, in all of G7 countries. G7. More jobs have been created since early 2000, as Speaker. Our GDP is growing. But, Speaker, what we're also are seeing that the pressures on families are growing as well. There is a tremendous amount of anxiety. The families. All right. You've asked. We're in warnings. Finish. So even though, Speaker, our economy is, is growing, we're creating more jobs, there is a tremendous amount of pressure that our families are facing. They're feeling pressures around home care and child care and long-term care, uh, care. And that is why, Speaker, we are making a deliberate yes, choice to invest in these essential, important public services. Unlike Doug Ford and Ontario Conservatives, we're not going to Thank cut you. those services. We're going to invest in those important services. Thank you. Supplementary. Go back to the acting premier. I'm sure the 51,000 people who lost their jobs in Ontario in January don't believe a word that you just said. Nope. Speaker, on April 2, 2012, someone on the government side of the House said these words in the legislature. Quote, I think everyone here knows that eliminating the deficit is the most important thing we can do to it? move to economic growth. Who said it? Mr. Speaker, can the acting premier tell us who said that? I think I know. Minister of Economic Development and Growth. Minister of Economic Development and Growth. Well, thanks very much. <clears throat> thanks very much, Speaker. You know, I was fascinated by the first question uh, on this round that came from the Leader of the Opposition Speaker. It was interesting that he quoted uh, from the throne speech. It would have been more heartening for the people of Ontario if you had actually listened to the entirety of the throne speech and heard about how we are ambitiously investing in the people of this province. Speaker. As the Acting Premier said just a second ago, since the depths of the global recession, this province has created more than 800,000 jobs. We lead not only this country, Speaker, we lead not only this country, but the entirety of the G7 when it comes to GDP growth, Speaker. We are creating jobs because we are literally, every single day of this week, investing in our people, investing in infrastructure, investing in public transit, investing in all of those things that are truly the ingredients of what will provide for a brighter future Answer. for the people of this province. And just once, Speaker, I would deeply appreciate it if that party would find a way to get it right and support the initiatives that we're embarking on to build a strong— Thank you. 
final supplementary. Back to the acting premier. Well, let me tell you, it was the premier who spoke of no deficits. But yesterday, we saw once again this government will say anything to cling to power. They, they highlight how life is harder in Ontario, but ignore the fact that it's because of 15 years of Liberal rule that life is harder in Ontario. All this spending and debt, and where are we? 32,000 long-term care bed waitlist, hallway medicine, aut autism and mental health waitlist lists, all with no results. The Liberal insiders got rich, while the rest of us got stiffed. Mr. Speaker, will the Liberals admit this leading, the latest spending spree is an attempt to cling to power and not to make life easier in Ontario? Thank you. Minister. Well, Speaker, you know, not, not for the first time in my time in this legislature, what we're seeing from the Conservatives is yet again a significant deficit in creativity and a significant deficit in believing in the people of this province, here, here. Speaker. As I mentioned a second ago, 800,000 new jobs that have been created since the depths of the global recession a wow. decade ago. Can't quite pinpoint. You're throwing your own member under the bus. All right. <clears throat> I'm trying to be serious here. <laughs> Finish, please, Mr. Thanks very much, Speaker. As I was saying, you know, as the Acting Premier mentioned a little bit earlier today, we are, we are investing in every corner of this province. We are building the province up. And I would say to the members of the Conservative Caucus, Answer. it's okay if you have misguided beliefs about cutting and slashing and burning, but the people of Ontario deserve to know the truth about exactly who you're going to hurt, who you're going to throw under the bus, Thank you. who you're going to push to the side. Let the people of Ontario be up and Thank you. Let's stop the clock, please. Seated, please. Um, an another reminder: uh, if you address the chair, you'll know that I was standing. New question: The member from Timiskaming, Hawkins. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the acting premier. Kathy Lee is a 66-year-old Torontonian. She retired from a career as a daycare worker. She has no health care benefits anymore. No dental coverage at all. Kathy hasn't been to the dentist in nearly two years. Why have the Premier and her Liberal government done nothing in the past 15 years to help Kathy get the health care that she needs? Thank you. Acting Premier. Thank, thank you very much, Speaker. I thank the member opposite uh, uh, for the, the question. Um, speaker, it's people like Kathy and many people like Kathy across the province who we are focused on. We want to make sure that, that Kathy and all of the people around the province uh, have the kind of services that they need when it comes to quality health care uh, in their community. That's why, Speaker, we've been making unprecedented investments uh, since we have come into office in making sure that we're building health care up. After the devastating cuts that were made to the health care system by the previous NDP government and the, by the previous Conservative government, Speaker, our focus has been to make sure that we build new hospitals, that we invest in our community health centers by making sure that there are important services available to all Ontarians. But, Speaker, we recognize that there more needs to be done, and that is why, Answer. as we heard from the speech from the throne, we will be investing uh, in uh, important care that people like Kathy and other Ontarians uh, need in our province. Thank you. Supplementary. Fifteen years is a long time to focus, Speaker. <laughs> Kathy's mom also has no dental coverage. She says that when she or her mom need to go to the dentist, her sister has to cover the cost. It's embarrassing for Kathy. So she and her mom just don't go unless it's an emergency. Why has this Liberal government spent 15 years in office and yet taken no, absolutely no action to help Kathy and her mom? Thank you. Our, our government continues to take action to help thousands of families with health care costs, providing families with over 1 million free prescriptions thus far, thus far through OHIP Plus. Our government made the biggest expansion to Medicare in Ontario in a 
generation by providing drug coverage to over 4 million children and youth. 4 million speaker children and youth that now have access to over 4,400 drugs, including antibiotics to treat infections, asthma inhalers, insulin, seizure medications, oral contraceptives, antidepressants, drugs to treat arthritis and epilepsy, and some drugs to treat cancer and rare diseases. Speaker, that is happening at no cost, no fees, and no co-payment to our families. This is a significant first step towards our vision of universal pharma care Answer. that will help bring free drug, drug coverage to everyone and ensuring a healthy start in life for our children and youth that will result in a healthier, more productive province. No supplementary. Kathy, Kathy says the fear of having something go badly wrong with her teeth and being forced to rack up credit card debt to get the problem taken care of is something she worries about all the time. Kathy isn't alone either. Two-thirds of Ontario seniors have been left without dental care for decades, by decades of Liberal and Conservative governments. And we have an aging population, so that statistic will only get worse if we don't take action now. Why did this Liberal government ignore the huge gap in health care for Ontario seniors for 15 years? Speaker, uh, as you know, we, we, uh, we have a program, uh, a Healthy Smiles program, that is focused on, on children and youth in, in our province. And, Speaker, we want to expand and build on that program. Good Speaker, idea. that program provides free preventative, routine, and emergency dental services for children and youth for low-income households across the province. This program is helping more than 450,000 kids access important dental services, and this number continues to grow. Speaker, we will work towards building out a larger program for low-income adults that will provide peace of mind for these families and individuals, allowing them to be more productive. Speaker, we welcome some of the ideas that have been brought forward by the NDP to Answer. help seniors and support our health care system. As these are steps that our government has already been taking, already we will continue to invest Thank in you. care of Ontarians. Yeah. New question. The member from Timiskaming. Thank you, Speaker. Once again, to the Acting Premier. Callie Lynn is a young woman who works in the arts and culture sector in Toronto. She does have a few hundred dollars per year medical benefits at her current job, but it's not nearly enough to meet her basic health care needs. She is forced to choose between going to the dentist or dealing with other physical and mental health issues that she faces. Why is this Liberal government okay with Cowley being forced to choose between going to the dentist and addressing her other medical needs after 15 years? Thank you. I can bring it. Well, Speaker, as, as, I, as I said uh, uh, earlier, our government very much recognizes that, uh, that our families and our Ontarians are, are feeling uh, pressures. Even though our economy is growing, even though more jobs are being created, uh, people uh, through, uh, through our increases in, in minimum wage to $14 an hour to soon to be a living wage of $15 an hour on January the 1st, 2019, are still, a, uh, are still uh, struggling when it comes to some very important services they need for, uh, uh, for their own care. Speaker, that's why we, we want to invest in those cares. We want to make sure that pressures the families are, are feeling about finding good child, child care or saving up money for, for tuition to go to college or university or for an aging parent to have long-term care. Answer. That, that we are investing that. And our speech from the throne, Speaker, was very clear that, that our care agenda will make exceptional investments in those important services. Thank you. Supplementary. Callie says that she has put off getting needed gum grafting for more than a year because if she does go ahead, she won't have any money put away in case of an emergency. Why does this Premier not seem to care that young workers like Callie are facing this impossible choice? Thank you. I think one thing the Premier has exhibited uh, in, in her role as a Premier and as a member of provincial parliament that, that she cares deeply about Ontarians, that she is com always focused on investing in, in programs and services that are important to Ontarians. That is why she has recognized and continues to, to work towards ensuring that we have fairness and opportunity. Uh, for people of Ontario. That is why, Speaker, the Premier is focused on building a caring society, in investing in things like childcare, in investing in things like 
expanded uh, 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 investments in, in, in health care and mental health care, not to mention, Speaker, we need to make sure that we look at uh, how we can expand our OHIP plus a plan, as was, as was stated in the speech from the throne, and not to mention That's looking at idea. dental care program for those who may be Answer. on low income. We thank the NDP Speaker for the ideas they have, uh, have brought forward. Uh, we will continue to ensure that we are investing in the care of people of Ontario. There are about 4.5 million people in Ontario, just like Kathy and Callie. People who have always worked hard, done the right thing, played by the rules. But they have been let down by decades of conservative and liberal governments who care more about hanging on to power than helping people like them. True, true. Will the Liberal government apologize to Ontarians without dental care for taking no action over the past 15 years to help right them? On, right on. Thank you. Acting Speaker, thank you. Speaker, our government ha has been focused on building a, a strong, publicly funded health care system. We have invest, uh, invested heavily in our hospitals. Huge. All the hospitals across the province uh, have grown significantly, providing more services uh, to Ontarians. Speaker, we have been investing in our community health services to make sure that at a community level we have good uh, health care services available. Speaker, we have made unprecedented investments in building a primary health care system so that no Ontarian is left behind in terms of access to primary health care, be it through a, uh, a family doctor or a nurse practitioner or through their local community health centre. Speaker, we are going to continue to build on that foundation. We are going to continue to build on that investment. That is Sir. why, Speaker, we launched the OHIP Plus program, and we want to expand that program and ensure when it comes to dental care, we're looking after low-income Ontarians as well. Question. The member from Elgin, Middle Sussex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Acting Premier. Today, Speaker, we're joined by Patients Canada, the Ontario Personal Support Workers Association, the Ontario Community Service Support Association, and Home Care Ontario. They are here today in protest of this government's new and controversial PSW agency. The government has moved forward with this new home care bureaucracy with zero consultation. Okay. Instead of spending precious dollars on home care, and patients, they've moved $3 million to, from frontline workers to the expanding bureaucracy. Given this government's poor track record, this clearly is not going to be benefiting patients. Can the acting premier explain why they failed to consult with PSWs, patients, and home care organizations? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, and um, I thank, I thank the, the member opposite for the question. Speaker, we know that Ontarians want more control and choice over their home care services. That's why, Speaker, our government launched two new innovative self-direct care models Sorry, that cut. patients could, cop, uh, could opt in that would A, provide home care clients with funding to purchase services in their care plan or to employ people to provide these services, uh, or B, Speaker, provide home care clients with the opportunity to select and schedule their personal support workers from an organization that will protect clients from the administrative burden and legal risk of directly employing staff. Speaker, we know that a small group of patients with chronic long-term needs want strong relationships with their care provider, which will leave both the care pro provider more satisfied and the client with better care. And the reality yes, is sir. that the clients with complex conditions may need or want assistance to design their own programs and may have little knowledge in dealing with employer taxes, employee benefits, and how to conduct background screenings uh, of PSWs. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Back to the Acting Premier. Speaker, this, this government has planned the creation of this U.S.-modeled PSW bureaucracy for months behind closed doors. They've handed this new bureaucracy over to the SEIU in exchange for them running attack ads through Ontario's working women. They've taken dollars directly from patients' frontline care for their own political Shame. gain. Shameful. They continue to put insiders and their political self-interest first while making life harder and more unaffordable for Ontarian families. This government should be ashamed of themselves. Shame. My question for the minister, how many more dollars does this government plan to strip from patient care in order to buy votes? Good question. The member will withdraw. Withdraw. Acting Premier.
Personal Support Services Ontario is an option that helps that navigation process. The member from Niagara West Glanbrook is warned. Carry on. This service is an option that would help uh, the navigation process and allows both the personal support worker and client to focus on what is important, which is the care. And, af and after careful consideration and feedback from the sector speaker, we adjusted the parameters to ensure that there will be no local disruption to the market. This model will serve a very small client population in parallel uh, to our existing home care system. It will be implemented in three lens to be evaluated for cost effectiveness, patient need, and patient outcomes. Uh, speaker, we know how critical home care is to the quality of life of Ontarians, which is why our government will be making major investments in home care, as we heard in the speech from the throne yesterday, to provide more services for people aging at home and provide financial relief Answer. for families caring for aging loved ones. We will continue to put Ontarians first. What, what the Conservatives need to come to clear is how many Thank you. PSWs they're going to find. Thank you. Your question, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Acting Premier. One in three workers in Ontario today do not have workplace health benefits like dental coverage, and the problem is getting worse. It's not getting better. More and more people are working in unstable works with no health benefits for themselves or for their families. And whether it's the 2017 report on income security, the 2016 Changing Workplaces Review, or the 2012 Commission for the Reform of Social Assistance in Ontario, this government has been told for years that all workers should have have access to dental coverage. Why has this government not listened to your own advisors, your own reports, your own recommendations, and have failed to give the people the health benefits that they deserve in the province of Ontario? Thank you. Speaker, as I said earlier, we thank the NDP for the ideas that they're bringing forward to further support Ontarians and for, to further strengthen health care uh, delivery uh, in Ontario. Speaker, we uh, uh, are exactly on that track to ensure that more and more Ontarians get the care that they need in order to uh, support themselves and their families. Speaker, OHIP Plus, uh, which, is a, uh, which is a farmer care program for children and youth till the age of 25, is a great example of that. Speaker, what's Excellent. remarkable about that is that families with a simple uh, uh, OHIP card don't have to pay anything when it comes to uh, accessing up to 4,400 prescription wow. medication uh, that will be funded through OHIP uh, Plus. Speaker, that is an incredible program. It's the first Answer. of its kind in Canada. In fact, Speaker, it's the first of its kind in North America. That is our track record, and we're going to build on Thank that you. and provide care to Ontarians. Supplementary. Thank you very much. This government has known for years that one in three workers in Ontario today has no dental coverage at work. That is over two and a half million workers who work without benefits. Mr. Speaker, we shouldn't settle for this. We shouldn't be in this place in the province of Ontario. It is not okay that millions of workers and their families go without the health benefits that they need. We should fix it and make sure that every worker has the benefits they need and that they deserve. Why has this government done nothing to fix the problem, leaving over two and a half million Ontarians working and living without the basic health benefits that they need? Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, our government is focused on continuing to make investments to make our health care uh, system a stronger one and a more supportive one for all Ontarians. As a result, Speaker, of those investments, we have the shortest wait times from GP to specialist. And Ontario, Speaker, has the shortest wait times from specialist to treatment. We have the shortest wait times for CT scans. We have the shortest wait times for MRIs. We have the shortest wait uh, times for ultrasounds. We have the shortest wait times for radiation oncology. Wow. We have the shortest wait times for general surgery. Speaker, we have the shortest wait times for gynecology procedures. We have the second shortest wait times for medical oncology. And the speaker, the list goes on and on. That has happened because of the investments that we have made in our healthcare system. But speaker, we recognize that we need to do more. And that is why, through the programs like OHIP Plus Answer. and our commitment to enhance those programs, to ensure that Ontarians get the care they need, that is, remains the focus of our Premier Thank and the you. government, and we will continue to make those Question investments. The member for Jesus, 
Well, thank you, Speaker. My question is to the minister responsible for early years in child care. Speaker, I'm very proud of our government's committed commitments to ensuring families have access to high-quality and affordable child care and early year programs. In my riding, I have a lot of young families who call Beaches East York home. Yet, Speaker, we do face a shortage of child care spaces, so I have been working very closely with all with providers such as Centre 55 and the Kingston Road Montessori School to increase the number of spaces available. And I know this message is resounding across Ontario that more spaces need to be created. So I've heard from family speaker there are challenges with child care access and I want to ensure all of these families can be accommodated. Now speaker you'll note that the word daycare doesn't even appear in the platform of the new leader of the official opposition but I have heard from families that there are challenges with child care access and we need to support them. So speaker Question. can the minister responsible for early years in child care tell us what this government is doing to ensure family needs are being properly met? For education minister responsible for early years in child care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the hardworking member from Beaches East York for this very important question. Speaker, we know Ontario families are facing challenges when it comes to finding quality, affordable childcare. That's why our government decided to transform the way we deliver childcare in this province. And we have been working tirelessly for months to build new affordable childcare spots. In fact, in December, we announced that more than 8,400 Ontario children will now be able to benefit from the opening of 493 new childcare rooms wow. in close to 200 schools across the province. And in January, we announced another 2,700 new licensed childcare spaces for children aged 0 to 4 through new and renovated schools. Speaker, this funding is changing thousands of lives. Answer. It is one of the many steps we are taking to improve our child care system and build supports, and we are working hard to make sure we get it right. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the Minister for that answer and for the leadership that she is showing on this very important file. Now, it's encouraging to know that the government is working to address the needs of Ontario families. And I recognize there's a lot of work yet to be done, but families are keen to see how our system is being transformed. Speaker, about two years ago, I heard from constituents who were concerned that daycares, some daycares, were charging non-refundable, non-transparent waitlist fees. And in response, I brought forward a private member's bill to address this issue. So, Speaker, many parents are looking for child care options now, but we know the province has announced 100,000 new spaces. But what, Speaker, can the minister tell us about the next steps that she is taking in order to help transform Ontario's child care system to provide the kind of equitable, affordable, accessible daycare Thank that you. is so important? Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our government has been taking bold steps to ensure childcare is more accessible and affordable. By eliminating waitlist fees for childcare, we have been able to improve access to childcare and make life easier for families. By subsidizing 60% of new childcare spaces, we are working hard to provide more affordable spaces for families. And when children in Ontario turn four, they will be able to access full-day kindergarten, which provides early, high-quality education to four- and five-year-olds. Mr. Speaker, this results in huge savings for families and gives our children a great start in life. Sure. Speaker, all of this has laid a solid foundation for care and opportunity for children and families. Now, I know there's more work to do, but I want you to know that more is underway, Answer. and we will be addressing some of these issues in the upcoming weeks. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Thanks, Speaker. And uh, my question this morning is for the acting premier, Mr. Speaker. For those who don't know, internet and cable providers pay a fee to hydro companies to attach their wires to hydro poles. And last week. CBC News reported that a 133 per cent increase is being proposed by the Ontario Energy Board for those wow. fees. Ridiculous. Many of those companies, many of those providers have formed the Ontario Broadband Coalition here, here. to fight the rate hike. They're being honest here, Speaker. They've said that this expense would be one that they'd be forced to pass on to their customers. I can't say that it's shocking that life is about to get more expensive for residents of Ontario. The Liberals are doing nothing about it. They're sitting on their hands. So, Speaker, my question this morning is, will the Liberals stop this unfair question. rate hike in Ontario? Minister of Energy. 
Minister of Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pleased to rise because I know how important it is for Ontario families and businesses to have access to fast and reliable broadband internet, Mr. Speaker. That's why it's this government that's invested roughly $490 million since 2007 to upgrade broadband infrastructure across the province, bringing it closer to homes and businesses everywhere, Mr. Speaker. We're committed to building on this investment and continue to work closely with small, rural, northern and remote communities to understand their broadband needs, and we'll be releasing a draft broadband strategy later this year, Mr. Speaker. But when it comes to um, the issue that the uh, opposite uh, member had brought forward, it's the Ontario Energy Board, our independent regulator. They've recently undertaken a policy review of the wireline pole attachments and have issued a draft report for comment. We understand, Mr. Speaker, that the OEB has received a number of comments on this report and is now considering these comments. It is our expectation, Mr. Speaker, that the OEB yes, continues sir. to work with the telecom companies, utilities, and other stakeholders to arrive at a wireline pull charge policy that is fair Thank and you. balanced for both hydro and broadband companies. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, this new poll tax that's about to occur in Ontario is going to make the expansion of broadband internet more expensive. It's going to make it less likely that it's going to occur in our rural areas. And the Liberals and the Minister of Energy say they have no control over the proposed hydro, uh, hydro poll fee hikes. They're, they're passing the buck to the OEB, as we just heard from the Minister. But this government interferes with the OEB time and time again. They'll issue directives to help their friends, but not regular folks when they need the help. Everyone knows that the Liberals can stop this rate hike. This 133% hike will make the fees the highest in North America for broadband internet service. It'll create an even higher barrier for rural Ontarians trying to get this service. Mr. Speaker, will the Liberals put a stop to this unfair Question. rate hike, or will they do the same thing they did with hydro rates in Ontario and drive them up to the highest? You say it, please. You say it, please. Thank you. Minister. Speaker, I'm very pleased to rise and talk about hydro rates because, Mr. Speaker, it is this government, Mr. Speaker, that looked after the rates and made sure that they have dropped by 50 percent, Mr. Speaker, for all rural and northern people right across the province. Want to talk about a government too, Mr. Speaker, that is investing in people? We're building this province up by investing in infrastructure, roads, and broadband, Mr. Speaker. $490 million is what we've invested since 2007, and we're going to invest more, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we will not, Mr. Speaker, start cutting $10 billion, Mr. Wow. Speaker. And let me quote erratic and out of control behavior. I worry that if Doug was to lead our party, that would lead us to certain defeat. Who said that, Mr. Speaker? That member. They are actually, Mr. Speaker, not only going to lead them to defeat, but they're going to lead our province to ruin. We will continue to invest and make sure that we look after care for the people of our province. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. I will now remind you that we are in warnings. Anyone care to make a comment? I didn't think so. Thank you. New question. The member from Welland. Speaker. My question is to the Acting Premier. Lisa is a low-income senior who lives in my riding. Over the last year, she has lost 30 pounds because she cannot be treated for TMJ, a locking of the jaw, a severe arthritis. Her jaw locks, it gets stuck, and she has such overwhelming pain that she has been unable to eat. Worse, when she went to her doctor last fall, she was told that the oral services that she needed to fix her jaw are not covered by OHIP. Speaker, people like Lisa shouldn't be forced to choose between getting the dental care they need or paying the hydro bill, the rent, or buying food. Why does the Liberal government continue to fail low-income seniors in our communities by not ensuring that they have the dental care that they need? Thank you. I thank you Speaker, I, I thank the member for the question. I think it's an important question. Uh, because, Speaker, we have to do everything possible to help uh, our seniors, uh, Speaker, to make sure that they have the kind of care uh, that they need and they're so deserving of, Speaker. That is why, Speaker, I'm really excited 
uh, to share with the House what the Premier announced earlier today, that uh, Ontario government uh, will expand OHIP Plus to include all our seniors, people who are age 65 oh. and over, Speaker. Good news. That will Speaker, that means that our seniors will no longer would have to pay uh, for any prescription drugs in our province. Good Through news. an expansion of OA Plus, Speaker, more than 4,400 prescription drugs will be available free of charge to everyone 65 and over in wow. the province of Ontario, Speaker. By expanding Speaker OHIP uh, Plus, similar to what we have done for children and youth uh, speaker, our seniors will now be able to save on average of $240 per year. Prescription drugs uh, such as uh, medications for cholesterol, hypertension, thyroid conditions, Answer. diabetes, and asthma will be covered through this expansion OHIP Plus. Thank you. Yeah. Supplementary. Well, Speaker, Lisa doesn't want to take pain, pain pills, and Lisa isn't alone. And so the, uh, the, the fix, the Liberal fix on, um, on those out-of-pocket out expenses aren't going to help Lisa. Today, two out of three seniors are living without dental coverage. Our seniors built this province, Speaker, and when they need dental care, they should be able to get it. She has, Lisa has ongoing chronic pain, which has made her stress. Worse, she has overwhelming anxiety and she has depression on a daily basis. No senior should have to live in pain because they can't afford dental care, nor should they live with the worries about cracking a tooth and knowing that they can't afford to fix it. After 15 long years in office, why has this Liberal government left the vast majority of seniors without any dental coverage at all? Speaker, thank you very much. And as I said earlier, Speaker, we welcome the ideas that NDP are bringing forward to strengthen our health care system, Speaker. Uh, and we will continue to build on the successes that we have had in building a strong, publicly funded health care system in the province of Ontario, Speaker. That is why, Speaker, the introduction of OA Plus focused on children and youth till age 25 was such a uh, incredible Huge. move to make first province uh, in North America, first jurisdiction in North America to offer that service. And now, Speaker, to expand OHIP Plus to include all our seniors aged 65 and above is an incredible, incredible uh, uh, opportunity, Speaker, to ensure that we truly do have universal farmer care uh, in our province, uh, uh, Speaker. That is going to make uh, uh, really help our seniors Answer. in getting the critical medications that they need every single day to stay healthy, Speaker, and we will continue to invest in their care. New question, the member from Davenport. Here, my question this morning is to the Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Development. Uh, Speaker, in yesterday's speech from the throne entitled A Time for Care and Opportunity, the government laid out its priorities. And unsurprisingly, the work the government is doing in student financial assistance was proudly mentioned. Speaker, this Great. government has transformed the way students access post secondary education sure right here in Ontario yeah. by providing them with the financial support they need to complete their degrees and diplomas in an ever changing economy. Can the Minister informed the House on what the government is doing to help post-secondary students afford the cost of higher education. Thank you, Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Development. Thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the member for da from ba Davenport for this question and for her passion for education. Speaker, our government believes that attending college or university in this province should be based on a student's ability to pay to learn and not on their ability to pay. Yeah, yeah. And that is why, Speaker, we have completed the most ambitious transformation of student financial assistance in North America. Yeah, yeah. Today, more than 225,000 students are getting their education without worrying about the cost of tuition, including almost 13,000 single moms. Speaker, with the new OSAP, eligible students, including mature students and adult learners, will receive enough in OSAP grants to cover average tuition costs. OSAP is unique to a student's circumstances. About four out of five students from families who earn under $90,000 will be eligible for free tuition. Wow. Mr. Speaker, helping Ontario students with their costs is part of Ontario's plan to keep post-secondary education. Uh, when I say thank you, Minister, you sit. Supplementary. Thank 
Thank you, Speaker, and I'm glad this government is investing in Ontario's brightest by providing them with the financial assistance they need. Actually, last night, while knocking at doors in my riding of Davenport, I met a young fellow who had recently moved to Ontario from Alberta, since this is where his girlfriend was able to find employment. Unlike what the party opposite suggests, we are open for business and we are creating jobs here in Ontario. And he was very grateful, Mr. Speaker, to be back in school to upgrade his education thanks to OSAP. And we know that the number of Indigenous students receiving OSAP has increased by 34 per cent. While this government is working towards making sure that everyone in this province be able to access education and training so that they can find good jobs and support their family, some students still worry about their debt. Can the minister address the concerns of those students and tell them what the government is doing to alleviate their debt? Good question. Minister. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you again to the member from Davenport uh, for her question. And uh, The member is absolutely right. As was said in our throne speech yesterday, at the core of the prosperity of this province is the skills and the talents of our people. And uh, Like the member has said, you know, when I speak to students uh, like Manessa, a first-year journalist student from from Sheridan College, who took two years off because she was saving up for school. Speaker, with the new OSAP, students no longer have to worry about the cost of tuition preventing them from pursuing their dreams. Ontario students graduate with the third lowest average student debt because of Ontario's robust and progressive student assistance program. In 2014, we provided students with almost $1.3 billion in grants and loans, and 70 per cent of it was money that students will not have to repay. It is also important to note that OSAP loans are interest-free while students are at school, and students have six months following graduation before repayment begins, and we're still making improvements to this great OSAP Thank transformation, you. Mr. Speaker. Uh, member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks, Speaker. Uh, my question is for the uh, acting premier. Can the acting premier tell this house which logo the government spent six hundred and fifty thousand dollars for? Is it A or is it B? Uh -oh. The member knows that that will be considered a prop and is not to use it again. Acting Premier. The Minister of Finance. Speaker. Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the member opposite is doing gimmicks. His new leader wants to promote cannabis in grocery stores and corner locations, putting young people in harm's way. So, Mr. Speaker, the member opposite is trying to make a mockery of the tremendous amount of work that's being done to safeguard young people to provide proper informed. Member from Renfrew and Nipissing, Pembroke, is warned. Finish, please. We are committed to ensuring we provide that safety, to ensure that we provide health promotion, to ensure our society is protected uh, from the illegal market and the illicit market that now exists. The branding is not about a logo, Mr. Speaker. It's a holistic approach to looking at the ways to control the distribution of marijuana and cannabis and recreational yes, and medicinal in our communities. We're going to safeguard the people of Ontario at their request, Mr. Speaker. Not enough Thank you. of their mockery. Thank you. Supplementary. Again, Speaker, back to the acting premier. Speaker, one of those logos cost this government six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. The other logo was created in about a minute by one of our staff using Microsoft Word. When this government has the audacity to claim there's no waste in this government, I'm going to remind them about this logo. We have seniors that can't find a long-term care bed. We have patients, Speaker, who are in hallways because of this government's hallway medicine. We've got children that are waiting for mental health services, we do. and they've got $650,000 on a logo. Ah. Speaker, how can yeah. this government justify $650,000 on a logo? Can't Come on! Can you say it, please? Can you say it, please? Very smart not to look at me. Mr. 
the branding of an organization like uh, the Ontario Retail Corporation, the cannabis stores, is more than just a logo. It's more than just a banner on the wall, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Not that time, no, it was him. If there's a test to be made, I'll take it to the next level if you'd really like to. And we'll get into naming. Finish, please. The costs involved will include branding, it will include supports for uh, the distribution, the, the supports for the actual content within those store locations. And the member opposite is just being reckless. They're being reckless with something as as they're laughing, Mr. Speaker, because it's a serious matter. We're talking about the distribution of cannabis in our communities. We're trying to talk about uh, stopping the illicit market. They're laughing at that. We're going to protect the people of Ontario. Your question the member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the acting premier. Today in Ontario, one out of three workers is working without health benefits, like basic dental care, and that number is growing. More and more people in Toronto are finding new ways to work. They found new opportunities as independent workers, on contract or freelance, but they're living with stress, worry, and even pain because they don't have the model of health benefits that work for the new ways that they work. Why does the acting premier think that freelancers and people earning a living in the gig economy should be expected to work without Health benefits like basic dental care. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I want to start by, by thanking the, the Minister of Labour, my colleague from, uh, from Oakville, for the tremendous amount of work he has done in making sure that we do bring fairness in our workplaces. Speaker, the entire work that he did uh, with, the, with the expert panel that consulted uh, Ontarians. Uh, over two years across the province with the, with the development of Bill 148, Speaker, was exactly de designed to ensure that we uh, modernize our labor laws and our employment standards laws to deal with the increase uh, of uh, uh, precarity of work in our province so that more people, speakers, people uh, who are maybe independent consultants uh, or work are self-employed uh, have the kind of uh, safety and security through our employment laws uh, uh, possible. Speaker, we need to, of course, build on that, but there Answer. is a recognition on the government's part. And that is why we thank the, uh, thank the NDP for the ideas they're bringing forward. We will continue to invest in strengthening our public health care system. Speaker. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. And again to the Acting Premier, and maybe this time an answer. <laughs> New Democrats believe that every worker should have health benefits. Full-time and part-time employees need benefits. So do temp workers, freelancers, people on short-term contracts, the self-employed. Every worker in Ontario should have health benefits, no matter what you do, no matter how you work. Why doesn't this Acting Premier agree? Thank you. Speaker, uh, I, think, I, think, uh, I think we are agreeing that they, these are very important and they're good ideas that we need to look at, Speaker. We will, uh, Speaker, as we said through the, the speech from the throne uh, yesterday, we will work towards uh, strengthening our public health care system, making sure that these important programs are there. And, Speaker, the proof point exists is, uh, is around the work that we have done uh, on OHIP Plus, Speaker. OHIP Plus, uh, everybody said, it cannot be done. We, uh, for the very first time in the history, of, of Canada, Speaker. In fact, the first ju jurisdiction in North America have now provided for uh, a free uh, prescription medications for our children and youth till the age of 20, uh, 25. One million prescriptions, uh, Speaker, has been issued as a result of that. But we are not stopping at that, Speaker. We are, as Premier announced earlier, are going to expand OHIP Plus to our seniors as well, people who are age 65 and older, Sir. so that they can also be able to get prescription medications. 4,400 prescription medications free of charge, Speaker. New question, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of the Status of Women. It is a remarkable time for women in this province. There is so much momentum for change, and I know that we are working hard to create fairness and equality for all women in Ontario. However, 
We know that Indigenous women in this province face unique challenges, and that is not acceptable. Indigenous women are disappropriately affected by violence and face even greater barriers when it comes to employment. In fact, Indigenous women earn 25 per cent less than Indigenous men and 43 per cent less than non-Indigenous men. Like all women in our province, they deserve to feel safe and empowered wherever they live. We must take action to confront and eliminate the root causes of violence and ensure Indigenous women have every possible opportunity to create Question. their own food. Speaker, can the minister please tell us what the government is doing to help improve the lives of Indigenous women and girls in Ontario? Minister for the Status of Women. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague for that important question. Speaker, as the Minister for the Status of Women, I'm ready to work to confront and eliminate the root cause of violence. I'm committed to working hand-in-hand -hand with the Indigenous partners, and the work is underway. We've consulted with over 200 agencies, Indigenous partners and survivors to inform It's Never Okay, Ontario's strategy to end gender-based violence with an investment of close to up to $242 million. This strategy will expand the Child Witness Program to offer individual counselling and support to Indigenous-led aid services at emergency shelters. It will help agencies respond to, with greater, to greater demand with culturally appropriate services and counselling for Indigenous shelters and healing lodges. And, Speaker, this month we have also launched the Then Now Next, Ontario's strategy for women's economic empowerment. Answer. It will expand our building our Aboriginal women's leadership program so that Indigenous women across the province have access to leadership workshops and supports for better opportunities. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you to the minister for her answer. The legacies of colonialism, systemic discri discrimination, and institutional racism perpetuate behaviors and norms that lead to violence against Indigenous women and girls. Speaker, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and urban Indigenous organizations are unanimous in identifying violence against Indigenous women as a priority issue in their communities. It's essential that we work together to develop and deliver policies and programs that put an end to violence violence against Indigenous women and girls. Just this past week, Ontario released its second progress report on Walking Together, Ontario's long-term strategy to end violence against Indigenous women. Mm -hmm. Minister, can you tell us more about how our government is working with Indigenous partners on this very important issue? Thank you. Minister. Uh, Minister responsible for Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, in 2016, Ontario was the first province to launch a dedicated strategy to end violence against Indigenous women. The strategy was walking together, and our 2016 budget committed a further $108 million to initiatives under that document. This strategy was designed in collaboration with Indigenous partners through Ontario's Joint Working Group on ending violence against Indigenous women. And this week, I was uh, honoured to co-chair the very first ministerial committee, which brought together non-government Indigenous partners to, guide, to help guide the implementation of that strategy. Speaker, we value the input and advice of Indigenous partners. <laughs> Speaker, reconciliation is more than words. It's about action. And it's a shame that both parties opposite opposed our $108 million commitment to ending violence against Indigenous women. Shame. But our government, we will continue our efforts Thank to you. take action with our First Nation. Thank you. New question, the member from Perry Salmaskolka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the acting premier. In yesterday's speech from the throne, the government, your government, talked about protecting automotive, steel, and agriculture workers from unfair U.S. trade policies, but conspicuously absent from the list were our forestry workers. This in a speech only days after the U.S. Department of Commerce announced duties of up to 22% on uncoated groundwood paper, newspaper. Uh, newsprint and paper for book publishing, this on top of the up to 6.5 per cent countervailing duty imposed in January. Speaker, this duty is based on an investigation into Catalyst Paper of British Columbia. Because Catalyst was allegedly found to be dumping, any Ontario pulp and paper companies that were not audited are assumed to be dumping at the same rate. Speaker, why did this government fail to mention forestry jobs in the speech from the throne? 
Is this yet another indication that Northern Ontario Question. is not important to this government? Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Question. It's a pleasure to rise to describe the role that we are playing in supporting the forestry in Ontario. Indeed, we are uh, worried about what's going on in the protectionist attitude of the U.S. And as you know, our government has do done a lot to spread the good word and protect the forestry against this protectionist attitude. I had the pleasure of meeting the Rare and Near People uh, Company uh, recently to talk about the struggle that they have in responding to, th to this protectionist agenda. Agenda from the U.S. We are continuing to help them and listen to the. We have a strategy to continue to negotiate with the help of the federal government the, the way in which we can resolve this long-standing disputes where we have been successful in the past. Yes, so we are uh, hoping that we will be able to continue to do the same. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the acting premier. One of the companies hardest hit by the duties will be Rainier, formerly Tembeck. The government says that people are important. So what about the 815 people in Kapuskas and Cochrane and Hearst who work for Rainier? People like the 57,000 people who work in the forestry sector. In order for these people to keep working, the forestry companies will need help to survive the four to five year legal process that comes with a U.S. trade dispute. Speaker, why isn't this government standing up for these people and their jobs in the forestry sector? What will the government do to save these jobs that are so important to Northern Ontario? Thank you. Minister. I'm very pleased again to rise about the work that we've been doing in the forestry sector for the last several years. It's been a pleasure to meet with the forestry sectors and talk about the myriad of programs that are there to help them. The, there are programs to help them build uh, roads, to support them in that context. We have also uh, helped them recruit appropriate employees, which is one of the issues that was raised, which is the shortage. Of, of skilled workers that they have. Indeed, the forestry sector seem to be progressing and wanting to have more access to more lumber. We are cooperating with them and ensuring that they are maintaining their forestry. We are very proud of the fact that many of them have sustainable forestry in Ontario, makes us a leader in the world in terms of sustainable forest yes, management. Sir. This continues to be a priority for our government to support their workers and Northern Ontario. I've had the, the privilege of meeting New question, the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> People in Northern Ontario deserve access to health care in our own communities. Communities in the north, including. Who to, please? Turn this to the acting premier. We shouldn't have to drive for hours on end to see a dentist. Workers shouldn't have to live without the health benefits that their families need. And seniors and Aboriginal communities and Indigenous communities in the North living on fixed income and facing soaring costs of hydro shouldn't have to go without the dental care they need because they can't afford it. Just the other day, a senior in Elliott Lake was told it would cost her $5,000 to repair her teeth and gums, but there's no help available. Everywhere, everyone in, in Northern Ontario deserves better. We need more public dental clinics in our community health Question. centers and Aboriginal health access centers and more mobile dental buses visiting our communities. The NDP has a plan Thank to do you. it. The Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And again, thank the, uh, thank the NDP uh, for coming up with, uh, with uh, some good ideas as to how we can strengthen our our, uh, our healthcare uh, system and, and their suggestions on on dental care. I hope, and I hope, Speaker, as I, as I've been saying earlier, that we are doing exactly that by by creating programs like OA Plus 
Now, would it be nice, Speaker, when we do introduce pro uh, programs like OA Plus, that NDP actually supports those programs by voting for, uh, for it, which unfortunately is not, not the case. Speaker, as I said earlier, we're going to be further expanding OA Plus by including seniors 65 the age, uh, and, and, and over. That is going to result in, in $240 a year saving wow. uh, for our seniors, not to mention access to 4,400 prescription medications that our seniors rely on so much to keep themselves healthy. Speaker, that is the kind of investment that we're making and the Care for Ontario. And I, I, I ask the, uh, the member opposite Answer. to stay tuned for the budget to see the kind of things we will do to further enhance care. And I hope the NDP will support our budget. Oh, Thank you. Today in the Speaker's Gallery, we have some special guests of mine and uh, friends, uh, Father Mark Curtis, Pastor Dan Rogue, Pastor Natalie Rogue, and a friend of mine, a constituent of mine, and a uncle to one of the members in this house, hockey's favorite hockey dad, Walter Gretzky. The uh, Minister of Innovation, Research and Science on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, within about 10 minutes, the spring is coming to Ontario, and it is no rules. The Persian New Year, about half a million Ontarians and Canadians, they are, in fact, they're celebrating no rules. So happy no rules to my colleagues at this chamber and to all Canadians who celebrate no rules. Thank you. Thank you. Member from Ajax Pickering on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as most of us, we will not be back till 3 o'clock this afternoon. Just wanted to remind everybody right up front that uh, there is a reception being hosted by MEAO in the committee room, 228 at 4.30 this afternoon. Thank you for your flexibility, Mr. Speaker. Of course. There being no deferred votes, this House stands recess until 3 p.m. this afternoon.